I got this fit for really cheap, but it had an automatic transmission and I regret that. Today we're going to do something about that. Welcome to VTech Academy. You're about to get schooled. Hey guys, we're back here with part two of our K-Swap in the fit. Uh, one of the things we needed to address was the fact this was an automatic transmission car. What do you think of automatic transmission cars? It's nice if you just want to press the gas and then press the stop pedal, but I much prefer three pedal vehicles. I much prefer three pedal vehicles. So we're, we're converting this, or I should say Brian is converting this over to, uh, uh, to a manual setup. So uh, yesterday you pulled, or earlier today, you pulled all the parts out you needed to pull out. Uh, now we need to swap in the new parts. Uh, that's what Brian's gonna be doing today. While he's doing that, I'm gonna be working on the wiring, trying to figure out what we need to change in order to get that to work. So just kind of a general overview of what's going on. Uh, we've got a new brake pedal. We have a clutch pedal, although we need holes for the clutch pedal. Yeah. Yeah. Then we have the slave cylinder and the hydraulic lines and everything, and, and we're going to put all those things in. I'd originally purchased all the stuff actually to go uh, manual transmission in the fit, uh, but uh, that plan got, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, gone. Gone, yeah, because... <laughs> You guys decide you wanted a K series, which is fine. I'm not complaining. I swear to God, the car's gonna be fast and it's gonna be a blast to drive. Anyway, Brian, and uh, have three pedals and have three pedals, even better. <laughs> it's gonna be fast and fun. All right, good deal. So, Brian's gonna get started on that. I'm gonna grab a manual and uh, lock myself up in a room where nobody can bother me, and uh, hopefully it won't take very long. Oh, just to kind of generally let you know, uh, when you looked at the firewall, you found it had spots for the new that was that was a godsend right godsend there. right there so we do need an inch and a half hole saw drill so i'm gonna go look for that first actually uh yeah because to, for the center for the part door. yep right yep. um but uh we made a cool little uh drawing and uh paper cut out so that he could find his hole centers that makes it a lot easier that way you're not hogging out holes after you make them and just decide they're not in the right place uh we'll see if i got them in the right spot they look pretty close. They look pretty close. <laughs> they look like they might work. All right. All right, Brian, take it away. So Brian drew up a little template on the computer, and I cut it out so it's roughly the shape of the master. It's got our center holes. I'm going to lay this up against the firewall and then use our center punch and punch into the firewall so I know where my center holes are so I have a good baseline to start drilling instead of the drill bit walking all over the firewall so we're gonna start with that and see how it goes So uh, luckily I have the correct manual for this car. Uh, there's a couple things I need to, to look at. There is the starter interlock. That's when you depress the clutch. It allows you to fire up the car. Um, so that's the first thing we take a, took a look at. And if we look right here, it's run by a relay that connects to what's called the uh, transmission range switch. Now the transmission range switch on all the newer cars is actually on the transmission rather than on the shifter itself. They do that because of safety. That way, if your cable breaks or is out of adjustment, the car knows what the gear the transmission's in rather than guessing if the cable is correct. So uh, that, running a wire into the engine bay, I don't know if I want to do that. Um, moderately certain I could pick it up somewhere. I'll take a look and see where that is. I know for certain I could pick it up at the fuse box. So I'm going to try to figure out what Connector is connector B33 or connector B on the fuse box and number 33. It's an orange wire. I'll connect that to one side of our clutch switch on the clutch pedal and the next other side I connect to ground. That way, anytime you depress the clutch switch, it allows you to start the car. The next was the backup lights. Now on our automatic car, the backup lights are run by a relay. Uh, the relay is uh, basically looking at the transmission range switch. Uh, when it is in reverse, it sends a ground signal, and then that, in turn, allows the 
uh, backup lights to work it, via a relay. Now, because the transmission rain switch is on the engine, that wire should be coming through the C101 plug, so I should be able to pick it up there. So what I'll wind up doing is on the backup light switch on the transmission, I'll connect one side to ground, and the other side I'll connect to this uh, green wire or white wire that goes to the transmission range switch, and that should give me the ground that I need in order to trigger the relay. So that's that part of that. And last we have what's called the ignition interlock switch. The ignition interlock switch is what locks your key and doesn't allow you to turn the key off unless the car's in park or neutral. Um, again, that's on the transmission range switch. So let's go to that um, circuit diagram. It's right here. So my solution is basically take the clamshell off. There's a little six pin plug that plugs into the ignition that has uh, four wires rather than six wires, even though it's a six pin plug. Uh, two of the wires are light blue and a purple one. If I cut or remove either one of those wires, it will not turn on the key interlock solenoid. And therefore the key will work like it does in a manual car. You can turn it off at any point, pull the key out, even if you're driving, which would be dumb. So uh, anyway, uh, that's gonna be an easy solution. That's gonna be a matter of uh, clipping or pulling a wire. And I'll probably just pull it because I prefer to deep end stuff and insulate it off just in case I ever wanna go back. Not likely, but you know, just in case. So. Uh, last thing is a reverse lockout. This is a six-speed transmission, reverse lockout. That's actually already on my harness. Because I'm using a TSX harness, it has a reverse lockout, so I'm good to go on that. The question is whether or not that is going to work with my Accord ECU. Uh, I don't know that that's a function that's available because it's a five-speed transmission. So what I may wind up doing is wiring in a momentary switch. Uh, I'll basically take the wire that comes from uh, the engine harness uh, to the ECU, I'll deep in it there, I'll make a little connection, go to a momentary, what's called a momentary off switch, I'll connect it to the momentary off switch, then the other side to a ground, so anytime I want to break the circuit, I push my switch, I can put the car in reverse, and then, uh, then keep going. So uh, generally speaking, you're going to be stopped when you're putting it in reverse, uh, at least if you're smart, and uh, so it's not a problem to take my left hand on and press a button real easily. And it's almost, almost like a, an added um, uh, bit of uh, um, security. Uh, not so much on a fit, but at, say I had an EG or something like that. If the person can't find how to get a car in reverse, sometimes they can't back it out of the parking lot if they've hotwired it or something. So uh, momentary switch it is. Um, anyway, back to Brian, see what he's doing. Yep, nope. Not happening? Not happening. Well, either a right, either a right angle drill or get this fuse box out of my freaking way. Because it's very much in the way. I got the other hole drilled, but... Erg. So you can't reach the, the bolts for the fuse box? Oh, I got the bolts for the fuse box and I oh. got the little clippy do undone. It's, I think it's just the, the wiring harness that's holding it in place right now. Ugh. So it's either a right angle drill or unplug all this funness off the fuse box. Get it out of the way for two minutes of work for future generations. <laughs> All right, you got it in there. Talk me through the process. Lots of drilling. Uh, the inch and a half hole was a treat getting through. I recommend a hole saw or a big step drill. Um, it was nice having the, the template holes already in place on the firewall. Mm -hmm. Once I was able to get that in, uh, get the master in, put the pedal assembly in, I could see where the upper two holes were supposed to be studs but mm -hmm. there there was actually holes provisioned so was able to drill those out enlarge them a little enlarge them a little bit drill them out and then put in a rib nut and ran a, it right up ran a bolt in there and she's in ready to rock nice it's nice that they had the two upper holes already in there and it's interesting that 
how thick do you think that firewall is? Triple, triple layer? I'm thinking it was triple layer, like, yeah. it, it, but it, it drilled through just fine. Yeah, and, and you didn't have to drill all the way into the engine bay. And didn't have to go all the way into just, the engine bay. Just two two layers, put the rib nuts in, bolt it in. Because that was my biggest fear is I didn't want to hit the, the brake booster. Yeah, because it's right behind the brake booster. It's right behind cool. the brake booster on, on the one hole. All right, but, excellent. Yeah, it seems in and solid, and now the vehicle has three pedals like we desire. Yeah, but we, we, we grabbed these parts, I should say, AD grabbed these parts out of a 2010 fit way back a while ago for me. And when we had them in our hand, they looked like they weren't going to fit, but we checked the part numbers, they're correct. And once we bolted it in, it fit barely. It's, it's funny, the, the clutch master looked too big for the hole that was in there, uh, but they're like exactly the right size. We have like an eighth of an inch, maybe. That's on a good day. Yeah. <laughs> Slide in about four sheets of paper in there. Uh, but it fits. It's a fit. It's got a fit. It's got a fit. The fit is go. All right, so uh, that was a manual uh, thing. One thing we're going to do is we're going to make up a, a soft line to go from our fit hard line right here all the way to our transmission hard line. So we're going to rig up a soft line for that. The Civic has a hard line that comes all the way up to here and the little soft line that goes to the engine. But we're going to make a soft line from there all the way through. Um, another thing is we need to... Oh, put the shifter in. Yeah. That's next. Yeah, get the but box that, and cables in, but that's... Yeah, but that's just line up with those, the stock holes and throw it through. The grommet should go right in. Once we do that, we can actually stab the motor in and make it a roller again. So, well, we should probably have Scott make axles, so we can put the axles in, too. Is there any more engine prep work we want to do before we get the motor up in there? Probably put the harness on it, but I... We might just put the motor in and put the harness on afterwards. I'm not sure yet. Um, let's go ahead and, well, before we put the motor in, we'll have Scott build some axles and um, put the shifter cables in. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's get the shifter cables in, and then we'll, uh, I'll go look for the harness for the engine. Because if we can slap that on, we can just plug the motor in. Sounds good. All right. We're still going to have to determine what the heater hose is, because we might be able to trim this one up to work. Well, they should be both. This like one might right. rotate 90 degrees and work. Shouldn't they both be? Yeah. Right here and here. Area. Yeah. Yeah. One of them, those are 5 eighths and one's a 9 sixteenths, yeah. if I recall correctly. Yeah. So, but yeah. And then maybe the fuel line might even work. Mm. It's not that far over. Yeah, it's more like, like right there. <laughs> I'm visualizing. <laughs> Visualizing. Not here. Huh? Here. That's right. Here? Yeah. Here. Yeah. Little to the left. A little. So, yeah, I'll uh, I'll get the uh, wiring harness so we can put it on. Cool. All right. Good job, Ming. All right. So last thing going in is our shifter and cables. Now. Uh, these cables are really short. I'm not optimistic that they're going to reach our K-series transmission, but you don't know if you don't try. So in the interest of science, we're advancing swaps. We're going to go ahead and see if it works out. But this is the cable setup. This grommet fits in just like the stock one, as you can see from our automatic. It's identical other than the fact it's got two cables rather than one. So it'll fit in like stock. If it winds up, we've got to change the cables. I'll probably wind up changing this onto our new, uh, onto our new setup. Uh, I got some tricks for doing that. Um, and I have an idea that what's going to wind up happening in these end is I'm going to wind up making a little adapter. For this point, we're going to wind up using the tension Civic cables, which are still available from Honda. Something interesting about transmissions, this particular shifter, because this cable gets pulled when you push this and push when you pull this, this is actually set up correctly for the transmission we're using. Uh, if we're using like an RSX transmission, which by the way is a different mount kit, if we're using the RSX transmission, uh, it would have to have an RSX style one where the fulcrum is below this and the cable actually gets pulled when you pull and pushed when you push. But uh, for this particular uh, 2012 transmission we're using, uh, this shifter mechanism has the correct mechanical action for what we want to do. 
So we should be able to just modify it to use it. Uh, our transmission is not actually a 2012 transmission. What it is is a TSX transmission, but it's externally identical to the 2012 Civic Si transmission. I didn't want to waste one of those transmissions in this car just because I wanted to uh, just I want to save that LSD transmission for something that's going to be a little bit more powerful. Probably not a horrible idea. Anyway, as a matter of fact, I'm not even going to waste the TSX transmission. I'm going to take my Accord 5 speed and put it in there because after all, this is just a, a, a fun little car to drive. It's not going to be on the track or anything other than, you know, occasionally just to see, see what it does. That is until I change my mind and, you know, go hog wild and put a roll cage in and all good Hey guys, we're going to go ahead and conclude that today, but uh, I want to thank you guys for clicking on us again. And uh, please think about liking, subscribing, sharing. You know somebody's got a fit and they need a case swap? Tell them about this video. You know if somebody's got a, a fit automatic and they need a manual transmission swap? Show them this video. We'll talk to you later. Thanks for clicking on us.